This is the fastest 3D printer that I have ever used, but just because it prints fast, doesn't mean it actually prints well and reliably. That's what we're gonna be taking a look at today with the brand new FL Sun S1 3D printer. Is it Filson? FL Sun, Fulson, I don't quite know. This thing is just absolutely enormous. It's extremely well built. This thing has to weigh about 100 pounds and it prints incredibly fast. And be warned, it is extremely loud. Now I did a live stream unboxing of this and I have to say the actual setup process of this was really straightforward and simple. Once you get it out of the box, you basically install the touch screen on the bottom of the printer, run some calibrations, and then you can start printing. And unlike basically every other 3D printer that I've shown off on this channel, this is actually a Delta 3D printer, meaning it's gonna be taller and more narrow, and it typically has a cylinder type build volume to the 3D printer and works on these three different point axes where it's able to move around during the print process, and typically these can go pretty fast. And in this case, this goes ridiculously fast. And just like when you boot up the 3D printer, it's gonna give you some basic information about this machine, including the print speeds that it's available to print in. And the advertised print speed is 1200 millimeters per second. Is it really gonna be printing that fast? No, but I've seen in some of its travel movements hitting 800 millimeters per second or even higher than that. And it has a maximum acceleration of 40,000 millimeters per second squared. Honestly, that's all mumbo jumbo to me. I just know that this thing prints so ridiculously fast. It spit out a benchy and pretty decent looking form in eight minutes. That's honestly pretty incredible. And the build volume is 320 by 320 by 430, meaning you should be able to print some fairly large objects vertically on this 3D printer. Now, if you're trying to print things like cosplay helmets, you might run into some size limitations, which I'll get into here in just a little bit. But for the most part, you should still be able to fit a lot of different parts on this printer. It is also Wi-Fi enabled, so you can wirelessly slice your files and send them to the printer if you'd like. There is a proprietary slicer that they're using, actually not proprietary, it's a, they've reskinned the Prusa slicer, or so it seems, and created the FL Sun slicer for this, and there are some predefined profiles that came with the printer, and it works for Mac and PC. The PC, or the PC version was only available on the USB stick with the printer. I had to download off of their website or their GitHub or something like that, the Mac version of the software. Also, this has the capability of wirelessly updating the printer's firmware. However, that did not work here out of the box. It continued to fail time and time again. So I reached out to them. They said I needed to actually download that from the website and manually update the firmware. It still doesn't work after this, but uh, I was able to manually update that. There's a little running consistency here that we'll talk about. There's also a camera built into the build volume of the printer that's gonna allow you to remotely monitor your prints as well as record time lapses that are vertical that are actually viewable directly on the touch screen of the printer. That's the first time I'm seeing that. I think it's a really unique, cool feature that they've added onto the printer. The other really nice thing about this printer is up top is an active heated chamber to actually dry and warm your filament as you're printing. The heating functionality can be enabled or disabled by the touch screen and you can set the time limit that you'd like this to run for. This is nice that it's in the front and not in the back of the printer like so many other machines that are out there today. It is kind of a pain to load the filament in here and specifically into the PTFE tube. I've had numerous issues with brand new rolls. When you try to feed that in there, the line of filament will end up flipping over the front side of the roll of filament. And it's just a really big pain to work with when dealing with brand new rolls. A potential fix for this is I'm just gonna add a longer PTFE tube if I can figure out how to get this all open and remove that and put a longer one in. Additionally, Modbot let me know that there is actually an entry point here on the side of the machine. So if you wanted to side mount some spools, maybe on a rack down here off to the side or one of those larger three kilogram or five kilogram rolls, you can do that. There's an actual opening here that will help feed that directly into the printer. And just to give you a quick visual size comparison, this is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, an extremely popular FDM 3D printer that also prints fast. 
Nowhere near as fast as this though. This makes this look like something from years ago, which is just crazy with how fast this can print. But here you can see just how large the S1 is compared to the X1 Carp. And when I say this printer is loud, I mean, it is very loud. This is easily the loudest 3D printer that I own. And that's because inside it's running a CPAP turbo fan. It's basically a vacuum that's gonna be sucking in air to blow that directly onto the print head while it's printing at those hypersonic speeds. Also, I'm interested to see if I could actually repurpose that as an actual CPAP unit that I could use while sleeping to not snore. Obviously joking, don't do that. The other thing I wanted to mention is that they claim that this has AI capabilities and a LiDAR sensor, so it's gonna be able to detect print failures and all sorts of other potential issues while you're printing. Yeah, no, that did not work. And in fact, it actually froze up the entire print when I was running a print job with this machine. And when I reached out to them about it, they said, please disable all of the AI functionality for now until they can get an update in that has a lot of that resolved. So I wouldn't count on the AI capabilities for this just yet. It does have auto bed leveling. And again, part of that calibration process, it's gonna run through and do the full bed leveling process. And I've had zero issues with print leveling and starting up prints with this printer. I'm actually in the process of editing this video and the pricing just recently changed on the S1. Originally, this was on sale for $1,300. I believe this was a, uh, a launch price for the printer. It has now gone back up to its default pricing, which is $1,500. So I, at this point, it's if you can wait, I don't know if it's gonna go back on sale again or not. At $1,300, it's a, I think, honestly, a pretty good deal for the amount of speed that you're gonna be able to get from it. The prints look pretty good. There are definitely some things that need to be refined on this printer, which we're gonna jump into. The first thing that I printed is obviously gonna be a Magneto helmet. This is from Nico Industries. This was initially printed in PETG. Now again, in their slicer that they provided, there are a whole bunch of predefined print profiles for different materials. So I wanted to print this in PETG, so I used that PETG profile, and it took, I believe, 18 or 19 hours for this to print. That was not fast at all. And in fact, I printed the exact same helmet in a different orientation that actually required more supports on the Bamboo Lab uh, P1S. And I believe this only took 13 hours to print. And just comparing the print quality between the two, they both actually look very nice. However, with this PET G print, it almost looks like there's a carbon fiber texture that was applied to this, and I'm not entirely sure why, but after posting about this online, it was definitely made clear to me that the profile that they provided for PETG needs to be refined. It sounds like the volumetric flow rate needs to be further adjusted, as well as some of the print speeds for the machine. But again, the print actually looks fantastic, but it definitely printed way slower than I was expecting it to. Also, the other major issue was that I did not actually scale this correctly. <laughs> I thought I scaled up the file to fit my head and it was just too small. So I ended up rescaling it larger to 115% of the original size, sliced this up with the PLA profile and got it printing. Now this printed much faster. This took just under eight hours to print, which is insane to me that I was able to print a helmet in under 12 hours, which is honestly pretty incredible. Unfortunately, the supports failed on this. And you'll see that is a reoccurring theme that I'm gonna to continue to run into with this machine trying to print with their profiles is that these supports just can't seem to handle these print speeds. But the quality of the print is pretty good. There is definitely some odd texturing to this, and I believe it is from the high speeds and just the delta, how it prints. I'm not entirely sure if I slowed this down, if I'd actually get better results or not. I might try and reprint this and see. Next up, I wanted to go really big, so I took one of Eastman's solid snake files and printed this as large as I could. I believe this was scaled up to 150% of the original file size and went off and printed this. Again, just about eight hours for the upper torso of this file to print. No supports needed for it, which were fantastic, and the results look really good. Again, there is an odd texture that I am seeing with the print here from the print profile and the high speeds of the printing. Now, I don't know exactly, again, what is causing that. If anybody in the comments knows, if they're familiar with Delta printers, because I certainly am not, but it still looks really good. But it's definitely, you can notice some weird little ribbing that we're seeing on the print. And it's not the typical layer lines that I'm used to seeing. 
Now my son's doing a presentation for school on Thomas Jefferson, so I decided to go and print Mount Rushmore for him. And again, another example of where the print itself looks pretty good. This was just some basic marble PLA. And using that PLA profile, the supports just completely did not stay put and work for this print. So I'm gonna have to reprint this with another printer. I also printed this PS5 pillow controller stand by Hollow Props. Again, another really fast print, but you can really see that funky texture on there as well as I haven't mentioned this already, but I am having an issue with the top layers of how they're printing on a number of these prints where it's not entirely filling them in or we're leaving zits on the sides of the prints. All right, and let's bring this monster out. This looks so friggin' good. I could have printed all of this other than the base or the wall mounted portion of this uh, Flexi Factory T-Rex skull head here on the S1. However, I just printed the top portion of the skull here on this printer. The lower jaw and the upper torso are the back mounted piece. Uh, were printed on the Giga as well as the Neptune 4 Max. Print quality, again, isn't exactly the cleanest. The supports failed on this in a number of areas, but overall extremely happy with how it turned out. I do think it looks better, the print quality, than what I was seeing off of the Giga there with its higher print layer height, but it's still got that funky texture that I'm seeing embedded into all of these prints. But just look how awesome this is. This was scaled up to 250% of the original file size. So fun. I definitely want to print more of these. And finally, because I'm so hyped up for the new Deadpool Wolverine movie, I had to go off and print Yosh Studios Deadpool Wolverine cowl file. This comes in multiple parts, which were great for being able to slice this up on this printer. Unfortunately, the full black parts for the face part and the ears were not able to fit in one piece. Thankfully, he has those separated in multiple parts, so I was able to print those. You'll notice this actually printed properly, and that's only because I slowed the print speed down and everything printed properly with those supports. Unfortunately, with the default profile in print speeds with the top portion of the helmet that was in yellow, the supports completely failed in a number of areas. Now, I think this is gonna end up being a reoccurring theme with this machine for the time being, is that the profiles provided by this machine, yes, they print incredibly fast, and for the most part, they look pretty good aside from some of the weird skinning that I'm seeing on some of the prints. However, if you ever need to print anything with supports, you have to pretty significantly slow the print speed down by at least 20% to get it to print properly. That said, it's still printing significantly faster than anything I can get off of the Bamboo Lab 3D printers. The uh, it's Just an example, if this printed correctly, this yellow portion here, I think this took six hours to print. I have one printing on the X1 Carbon, and I think it's gonna be about a 13 or 14 hour print. But honestly, none of that matters, the print difference, if it doesn't actually print properly, which is just the biggest issue that I have with this machine currently. Again, I think we're gonna end up seeing more dialed in and detailed print profiles for this machine, which would be fantastic. And it was great that we actually had a few for different materials. However, they don't seem like they were actually properly tested with printing with things like supports. I don't know if they were just testing them on printing things that don't require supports. And yeah, they look good and everything printed and it printed fast, but you, people are gonna be printing with supports a lot of times. Another big challenge that I have is with their actual slicer. It is not the best user experience. They've somehow made the Prusa slicer experience worse than what it was. So uh, that's just kind of painful. The uh, internet connected device here, you can set it up and have it wirelessly send files from the slicer to the printer. However, there's no actual progress bar. It just says completed as soon as you say send to printer, even though it's still having to transfer the files to the machine. So you have no idea if it actually sent it or not until it starts printing or it shows up in the menu system for you to actually print that file. Another funky one is I've rebooted the machine twice and the IP address for the machine has changed and there is zero way inside their slicer to update the printer's IP address setting. 
Maybe there is, and I haven't been able to find it, but inside the menu where you can actually see the printer, there's no way to adjust it. You can just delete the profile or add another machine. So I've had to add the machine multiple times to get it into the slicer. And yes, I know I could update my router with that IP address and give it a static IP address. I don't wanna do that. This should work properly from the get-go and have the slicer support being able to update the IP address. Now, throughout this video, you've also seen some time lapses that I've recorded directly on this machine. They're in vertical format, which is awesome for social media posting and sharing. It also makes sense that the, since the build volume for the printer is definitely more vertical than horizontal. But there is definitely some wonkiness when it comes to actually recording time lapses and saving them off of the printer onto the USB stick. That's right, you actually have to download that time lapse directly to the provided USB stick and then you can transfer it to your printer. However, if you have already downloaded a time lapse and let's say you start a new print and it records a new time lapse, which by the way, records over the previous time lapse because it can only store one time lapse at a time for what reason, I don't know. And if you end up trying to download that, it won't actually download the time lapse file because it already sees that time lapse is stored on the USB stick. Does this make any sense to anybody? Basically, you can't download multiple time lapses on the USB stick. You have to download it, move it to the computer, clean off the USB stick, then go back into the printer, start your next print with a time lapse, and then after that print's finished, you can download the time lapse. It's kind of confusing. I did also run into a clog with the machine as well, trying to unload filament. I was already pre-warned to not use the unload function that you need to load first and then unload because for some reason they don't have it programmed in to purge a little bit first before it unloads the filament. And sure enough, it clogged up and I ended up using the no clogger and shoved that through the throat of the 3D printed print head and was able to clear the clog, thankfully. Now it does come with an extra print head, which is great. So you can replace this if you get a really bad clog or I don't know, it wears down or I'm not entirely sure, but you've got a replacement here. How you do that, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't gone through that whole process yet. However, the one thing I did wanna call out is there are no replacement parts as of yet on the FL Sun website. So if you wanted to order more of these or you need a new build plate or anything else, there's nothing as of the time of making this video on their website other than the printer. Again, coming in at $1,300, the FL Sun S1 has the potential to be an amazing machine. However, it still has more work that needs to be done on it to really utilize its full potential with the AI, some of the user interface and functionality within that. The printing settings obviously need to be dialed in slightly to get better print results, especially when it comes to working with supports. You're gonna either have to slow things down or you're gonna have to further dial in those settings. I'm honestly hoping that they're working on providing more generic profiles for print settings that you can utilize between those different speed options and not every time do you want something to print insanely fast sometimes I want things to print slower and have better quality over just rapidly printing and prototyping some you will definitely be seeing me use this machine more in the upcoming months I'm having a lot of fun working with it even though I've had my fair share of some issues that I've had with it. It is a really rapidly fast 3D printer and the print quality is pretty good. It's not the best that I've seen. It's definitely not the worst that I've seen. And again, I think once we get things dialed in, it could be looking a lot better. I am really looking forward to some Orca Slicer profiles and I might start working on trying to create some of those based on the profiles that they provided in the FL Sun Slicer. And FL Sun did send this printer over to me for review purposes, video content creation purposes, and just in general providing feedback to them on this machine, which I had been providing a lot of over on their Facebook groups and just online. If you're interested in more information about it, I'll have links to it down below. Uh, also, I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here. If you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, you can find those in my Patreon and let me know if you want me to try and create some profiles for this. I, again, I am not familiar with working with Delta 3D printers, so this is a whole new thing process that I'm learning and working with. I want to say thanks so much for watching all and let me know what you think about this crazy, fast, loud 3D printer. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for watching all. I'll see you next time.